rockets, paper, emeralds, sugar, and cake? What do all these have in common? Sugar cane. One of the most valuable ingredients you could possibly get in a Minecraft world. In today's episode, we're gonna build one of the spiciest sugarcane farms that Minecraft has ever seen. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, welcome back to the channel. I'm of course your host, Jayvort, episode 29 of the Minecraft Hardcore Let's Play series, and we're finally building a sugarcane farm. No longer will I feel like a peasant manually punching sugarcane to get my rockets, to get my paper, to get my emeralds, to get everything that I need that this amazing ingredient gives you in Minecraft. We're going to fully automate it. We're going to make a beast of a sugarcane farm, and it's going to make our world so much better. I wonder what was so weird in that intro. I didn't even have my headset on. Regardless, here we are in our storage room. I gotta find a perfect spot for this sugarcane farm. I was scouting it out when I was on top of my copper monument. So I was standing on the copper monument, scouting to see where can I put the sugarcane farm. And then it hit me right there. I wanna go into this general area, dig a hallway so where I can kind of stuff that sugarcane farm right in there. Where it looks good on the outside, but the inside is mostly stuffed into that mountain, kind of hidden away. So now that we know where we're gonna build it, let's talk about how we're gonna build it. So I popped over to my creative testing world. As you can see, I'm in front of my storage system that I created. This was a pain and a lot of fun to make. I got something like my sorting system outline. This was gonna be some sort of automatic farm that I decided not to do. And look, there's my copper monument design, stage one, stage two. This world's been a lot of fun. Sugarcane farm, pretty simple design. We wanna have water, to where we can actually plant the sugarcane. Now you need a block above the sugarcane because we don't want to actually harvest the main block. We're just trying to get the second and the third layer. Pistons going across that. And then observers facing the sugarcane. Then you want to place blocks right behind the observers. Throw some redstone behind them. And now whenever the sugarcane grows to get to that observer, everyone is going to pulse. Boom, just like that. Grows. This one grows it pulses. This one grows, it pulses, and it automatically harvests it and sends it out into the water or sends it into the stream or your collection system. So that's the basics of the farm. Very simple, very easy. We just want to get it on a massive industrial size. This is kind of satisfying. Okay, now back to the world. Let's start on the basic materials for the farm. We know we need observers and pistons. That's pretty much the main thing that we need. So let's get crafty. Let's start with a stack of observers. So right here is pretty much all we need for the farm itself. Just the basics, observers, pistons, and redstone. And now we just have to go to the spot and dig out a big hallway so we can put our farm there. Okay, so I cut out this giant hole in the mountain, and I already kind of laid the base work of what I'm going to have the farm look like. So we're going to have some sort of door that keeps us in through here. Don't worry, this is where we're going to be cut off. I'm going to terraform everything so it looks natural and cool and everything like that. So in here is exactly where the farm is going to be. Here's where the sugar cane is going to lay, and underneath I'm going to have a hopper minecart collecting all of the sugar. That way I don't have any waste of materials. Okay, so first things first, I'm going to lay the track. So we have a gigantic row of powered rails that's going to help the minecart just bounce off the walls and come back. Okay, let's give it a test. I'm going to throw the minecart down. And let's see, it goes all the way. If it makes it all the way back to the other side, we're golden. And it looks like it's going to have more than enough speed. So, perfect. All right, but I still need to add the collection center. So we're going to have the collection center be right here in the middle of our door. So these two blocks. So let's place down our double chest with our two hoppers going into that chest along with its rails. And just like that, we have the collection center all set up. Okay, so the hopper minecart is all set up. Next thing we have to do is get the water ready. Now, luckily, you can just waterlog stairs. You don't have to have a bunch of running water here. Just like that. You see how I have the stairs on each and everything? Because you need water for sugarcane to be planted and to grow. Now, since it takes a full bucket of water for one stair, I got 16 buckets. And I have an ocean here, so I'm going to fill all these buckets up with water. Oh, this is a little bit of a tedious process. 
I just feel like in the long run, it's something that I'm going to want to do. I can place blocks on top of the waterlogged stairs and everything like that. It'd be really smooth, really simple. Okay, I think the block that I'm going to want to use is going to be just straight up copper blocks. Oop, plus I have bushels of it. And when it finally oxidizes, it'd be even cooler. But we all know how long it takes for copper to oxidize, so. And I'm thinking of kind of making this room a little eerie, right? So I'm thinking about using candles to light it up. Okay, so with the next block level down, it's time to throw on the pistons. Now, the corner's a little tricky, right? Because if I have a piston there and I have a piston there and both observers and they go off at the same time, the pistons are going to collide. It's going to break the machine. So what I'm deciding is prioritizing the front or the, the back row because that'll be the one that we see the most when we come in through the door. This corner, we'll figure out something to where it's going to go into the structure of the building. Uh, I love when a room is starting to like come together. Like it looks so mechanical with all the pistons and the copper and everything like that. I just... I oh, know, it makes me happy to see. Now, in order to make my job easier for placing the observers, I'm going to place the blocks behind that require the redstone on top. That way I can just knock that out of the way. And now the redstone. Making something of this size with a super tileable farm, it gets kind of repetitive, but in the long run, it's going to be really cool. And now the observers. Now, if you wanted to save on materials, you could use less observers and just hope that the sugarcane in front of your observer is the one that triggers the machine. But for looks, I wanted to do every single one because I think all the little faces looking at you, it's kind of creepy when you walk in this room. Like, just picture it. It's just like, oh, all the sugar cane. It's going to be cool. Speaking of sugar cane. And boom, technically, the farm's all done. This is everything that I need. But I'm going to seal it in with glass. That way I have no loss of materials. Now, to help with the sugar cane's growth and to light the room up, I'm going to alternate every other observer with glowstone let's just see how it looks you know what i think it works on the sides because i'll obviously put a different block in there but the back wall just looks kind of awkward so i'm probably just going to throw glowstone on every single slot in the back there we go okay yeah that's more like it i like that a lot better all right now i gotta put the glass in here and if you know me and if you've seen my videos you know that i absolutely love using stained glass for everything i mean just look at my diamond beacon beam it's a rainbow with sugarcane i'm thinking i need green dye so how do i get green dye cactuses Welcome to my little makeshift cactus farm. It's not much, but it's home. Luckily, being raised in a desert, I know a thing or two about cactuses. Cactuses are definitely not hard to come by. Okay, that should be more than enough. And just pop over to my furnaces. Okay, so when it comes to glass color, when you compare what green stained glass looks like to lime stained glass, it's clear to know which one looks more like sugar cane, right? The green, obviously. I'm joking, it's the lime. And because of that, we are going to use lime stained glass on this entire system. And boom, just like that, all the glass is in place, which means the farm is 100% waste free. So now all we have to do left is work on how the farm actually looks. So I'm thinking deep slate, because I wanted the room to look a little eerie, a little dark, because obviously this is all gonna get filled in. I'm gonna terraform, make it look like this is just stuck into the mountain. I obviously did too much digging. So I'm thinking the floor is going to be deep slate. Maybe deep slate tiles or deep slate something, but definitely something to do with deep slate. So let's change the floor. Three, two, one, boom, new floor. And I did a little trim on the outside with some polished basalt. I think it looks pretty good. Um, next I want to do is I want to figure out the roof design. Like I said, I kind of want to keep the natural layout of the beach. So I'll probably put the roof one layer under the sand and then cover it with sand. So it looks like it's kind of tucked away, but once you get in here, it's cool. So for a roof design, I'm thinking lime concrete and deep slate tiles, just like this. And I'm thinking in rows, all right? Horizontal rows, like I said, I already kind of marked out the levels that I'm gonna have it at because this will just be covered with sand. That way it looks tucked into the mountain. And I'm gonna put a redstone door here and don't worry, this isn't gonna be stone. But this thing's actually starting to come together. And just the time that it took me to lay the floor down, I've already got, boom, over three stacks of sugar cane. This thing is getting busy. Let's take this shulker box full of concrete and get to work. I hate that in order to make deep slate tiles, you have to go polish deep slate and then make them into bricks and then make them into tiles. It's just like, ugh. So I'm thinking that we're going to have horizontal rows like this, right? So we'll go all the way up. Oh! We're gonna have rows like this and then across the back, we'll do this little number right here. Okay, and right off the bat, I'm not gonna lie, I'm starting to like it, right? I think once I get the roof in, I should probably do the roof first and then work on the walls. Or I could work on the walls and then just shave it down once I get the roof 
Actually, on second thought, let's do the roof first, and that way we can just fill the walls in. Now, I got this guide here, so where all I have to do is just fill something in like this along the side of the wall, and that way I don't make any mistakes. I'm actually a big fan of, like, dark gray or black and this green color. It's usually what my Rocket League car is, and, like, everything when I play Rocket League, it's always green and black, so kind of feels like I'm crossing between games here a little bit. You know, it's also green and black, Ben 10. Yeah. Then you guys remember Ben 10? That thing was awesome. Like old school Ben 10, right? Like first time Ben 10 came out. I've said Ben 10 way too many times, but Ben 10. How about this? If you've seen Ben 10, I want you to drop your favorite alien down in the comments below. Who was your favorite? Who's your go-to? You could be one of Ben 10's aliens. Original 10, right? I don't need, we don't need the, uh, the newer ones. Who would it be? Who would be the, who would be the go-to? Mine would be the flame guy, or the guy with four arms, or the speed guy. Oh man, they're all so cool. I don't know, I'm going flames. He looks like the human torch. Take it easy over there, guys. I don't want no trouble. I'm just sitting here building the sugarcane farm. Nobody's gotta die. Don't you shoot that crossbow at me. Lead your men, King Leonidas. Lead by example. Don't shoot me, or you and all four of your men will die. Well, guys, I finished the roof. In fact, I finished the farm fully decorated on the inside. So let's go check it out. Boom. Huge, right? I like the way that it looks, right? I think that it fits into the mountain really well. I don't want to cover it up because then all of my hard work will not be seen. Um, and if we actually go over here from the village, right, you can see it over there. And you know that there's something there. So without further ado, let's go check out the farm. Ah, uh, come on guys, I had to do it to you. You know it's time to plant our 200 wheat seeds for this episode. Yes, if you're new to the channel, we do plant 200 wheat seeds in every single episode of the Hardcore Minecraft series. And as you can see, this wheat field's getting pretty big, so let's lay down our 200 seeds real quick. Now, if you guys want to see just how big this wheat field gets, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you never miss a video from me. Like I said, we add 200 wheat seeds to this field every single episode, and we post videos quite often. And done. Just a final flyby. There's our 200 behind us. Gosh, this field is getting large. Now let's go check out the farm for real. Alas, there she is, coming into frame, the sugarcane farm. Now, I'm not the best builder. Let's check it out. And boom, there you can see it, the fully done sugarcane farm. Tons of lime, tons of, oh, it just went off. Tons of deep slate. As you can see, I had to use a lot of my honeycomb because, I don't know, I felt like the candles to light it up makes it a little eerie. I put some candles on top of lightning rods to do this little elevated look. Now, I kind of like the dark look of it all. Now, I've already tested all the light levels. There should be no mob spawning in here. Trust me, this is more than enough candles. And just the time that it took me to build this thing, we got nine stacks of sugar cane. Now, this farm is definitely going to put an end to all of my problems that I have to do with running out of paper and rockets and things like that. Because just in this episode, I used probably three or four stacks of rockets, right? I had to go back to the gold farm to heal my tools because this was a lot of digging in this episode. A lot of blocks were placed. But the final results, it might be kind of repetitive, but I don't know. I kind of like it. But just like that, that's where I'm going to wrap the video up, guys. Episode 29 of the Minecraft Hardcore Let's Play series in the books. But don't worry, next video is just on ahead. I'll see you there.